Yes, hello, a very good afternoon. You're watching the Sunday Politics for Yorkshire and Lincolnshire coming up today. Remembering our Len, Theresa May and Jeremy Corbyn lead tributes to our much-loved friend and colleague who died last week. Yorkshire has lost a powerful voice. He was always such a gentleman, always so respectful, always so polite. Also on today's programme, we investigate whether there's a link between an increase in knife crime and cuts to youth services. When you cut resources, you make them get to the lowest point in their lives. And who's going to pick up these young people that get left behind thereafter? And we ask what impact Sheffield's tree-felling controversy will have on elections in the city. Today we're joined by Labour's Louise Hay, Conservative Robert Goodwill and Liberal Democrat Lord Paul Scriven. Hello to you all. The Prime Minister and Leader of the Opposition have led tributes to our much-loved friend and colleague Len Tingle, who died last week. Theresa May said Len was a wonderful advocate for Yorkshire. Jeremy Corbyn described Len as a joy to be with. Now, Len was an essential part of this programme and its predecessor, The Politics Show. It's hard to imagine he won't be on our screens every Sunday, but we have some wonderful memories of working with Len and he'll never be forgotten. It's 200 years since Sir Humphrey Davy revolutionised mining by creating this, the mining safety lamp. This was Len at his best, soiling his hands at the coal face of news. Before the strike around Pontefract, there were six pits. This one, the Prince of Wales, is the last survivor. What sort of assurances can you give us that the economy in this region is safe in the hands of a Labour government? What I can't guarantee, Len, is that whether he was talking to a pitman or a prime minister, Len approached every interview with a polite, no-nonsense approach, due in no small part to his upbringing in Cuddeth near Barnsley. Prime Minister Len Tingle from BBC Look North, welcome to Yorkshire, good to see you. Well, our industry correspondent Len Tingle has been following today's developments. He's joining me now from the newsroom. Uh, Len, does this mean that the pit is actually saved? No, it doesn't. Uh, this deal announced today has bought time. Len's original specialism was business and industry, but he moved seamlessly into politics and his services were soon in demand on a new Sunday morning TV show. First, let's go to Len in Sheffield. Len. Len travelled the length and breadth of Yorkshire and Lincolnshire for the politics show. This is the politics show in the north. Oh, no, it isn't! It really is the politics show in the north. He even went to Tennessee to find out about a reading programme for children run by Dolly Parton, which was about to be rolled out in Rotherham. Let's have a quick word with John. You might remember our satellite truck was often in shot behind Len, just to prove he was live. We're outdoors at the Yorkshire Sculpture Park. We brought the truck here, an amazing place. When I joined the team in 2007, I was given a warm welcome by the great man. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's hear it for Tim Iredale. <laughs> Thanks, Len. It's nice to be here. Coming up... Well, I'm here in Hebden Bridge, and as you can see... The... He didn't care what people were talking about in the Westminster village. Politics for Len was all about what was happening across our broad acres. Len Tingle, who followed me for a day last year, persuaded his wife to come with him for a day out in the Dales and an evening at a B&B. She ended up carrying all of his bags and then uh, being the camera man for uh, the evening. And I think um, that shows just how hard local journalists are working day in, day out. <laughs> The whole idea of devolution was quite simple, that groups of... Len never tired of finding new and innovative ways of covering complicated issues. And here we go, a powerful fighter this Leeds City League. Most of the time it was great fun, and Len never took himself too seriously. Many people will have seen the TV tributes to Joe Cox, and they will feel like... But just occasionally, a more sombre tone was required. You join me in front of what is a mountain of floral tributes to Joe Cox. Um, I reckon in the couple of hours that I've been here, a hundred more bouquets have been added and they're coming every minute. Len was a giant of broadcasting, someone who demanded high standards from his colleagues, but he was never too busy to offer a friendly word of advice to those pursuing a career in journalism. What a gentleman, what a lovely man, and what passion he had for Yorkshire. Whilst he was capable of asking very tough questions, that's what journalists are there to do, 
He was always such a gentleman, always so respectful, always so polite, and such a joy to be with and talk to, and uh, my deepest sympathies to all his wonderful family, but also his family in the BBC and his family in the whole journalistic community. And as a member of the NUJ, I say to him, farewell then, and thanks for all you did. I was saddened to learn of the death of Len Tingle. Len was a wonderful advocate for Yorkshire, and for many years covered politics with a great depth of understanding and a real passion for his job. I was interviewed by Len on a number of occasions and found him to be fearless and forensic in his questioning, but always friendly and polite. Journalism has lost a true professional and Yorkshire has lost a powerful voice. This is the village green at Callington, as you can see, Half the village have turned out today. They are not at all impressed at the idea of an eco-town on their doorstep. I think John, we, we, Len was a much-loved colleague and trusted friend. Things aren't going to be the same around here. The signs down here that they are not at all pleased. It's back to Tim in the studio. Remembering our friend Len and the thoughts of all the team here are with Len's wife, Angela, and his daughters, Chloe and Rosie. Um, I know you've all done your time on a Sunday in the wind and the cold and the rain, stood with Len, with the satellite truck in shot, no doubt. What are your memories of, of the man, Paul Scriven? I mean, off, off camera, fun, uh, friendly, warm, uh, encouraging. Um, as soon as the camera went on, absolute professional, totally incisive, cut through the nonsense, got to the key issues that the people of Yorkshire were thinking. and. Um, He's going to be sadly missed. You know, I uh, I've been interviewed by many uh, many people and many journalists. He had something. Len had something which was truly Yorkshire grit, and and he understood the kind of heart and the soul of the county, and made sure that all his questions were uh, the questions that local people would be asking. And he wanted proper, honest answers. What about you, Robert Goodall? Yeah, I think he could make even the most dull subject sound exciting. In fact, I think sometimes he was more excited about local <laughs> politics than the politicians <laughs> themselves. And uh, he'll, be, he'll be sadly missed. And uh, I heard a while ago he, he was ill and it wasn't going to turn out well. And it was just just like somebody hit me in the stomach when I heard about it, actually. It's really sad. Uh, Louise, you're a relatively new MP elected in 2015. Were you always aware of, of Len's reputation? Yeah, not only um, was I interviewed by Len, but I grew up watching him on Look North and on the politics show. And as has been said, you know, he was a true gentleman, but also a fantastic journalist. So my sincere condolences to you, Tim, and to all those who work with him and his family. He will be really, really missed by you all, I know, but also all the watchers of uh, Sunday Politics and, uh, and of Look North over the years. Well, there have been some uh, fantastic tributes coming on social media and elsewhere from, from lots of people who love Len and we thank everybody for the messages you've sent us but of course Len would want us to get on with the business of talking about politics on a Sunday and that's exactly what we're going to do right now.